Uh, just uh, strategically, uh, Israel is engaged in operations inside the West Bank with ground forces, with tanks, uh, and, uh, and ground troops. Uh, they, but uh, a few days ago, uh, they entered uh, the Gaza Strip from the north. Um, what, what happened, I think, over the last 24 hours is that uh, military personnel has entered the Gaza Strip kind of in the middle, just south of Gaza City. And what they're trying to do is basically cut Gaza off into two. They're going to separate the south of Gaza from the north. Now, remember, this is about a 25-kilometer uh, stretch, and they're going to cut it into two. I'm not sure if it's half. I don't know what, what, what the... It's about half. And the south is where they want the civilians to go. The south is, uh, is they're leaving. They're, they're much more um, using precision. Uh, um, Rockets over there, they're being much more careful in what they bomb. They're basically asking all the civilians to go there. That's where um, humanitarian aid is being supplied uh, from Egypt. And Israel just agreed last night to increase the humanitarian aid significantly. So there'll probably be 100 trucks a day of humanitarian aid coming in uh, just to make sure that the, the, the poor Palestinians don't starve. And, um, and, and they'll, they'll keep the south segregated that way. Of course, there are tunnels underneath. So... Now, we'll, we'll talk about tunnels in a minute. So they're going to split the Gaza Strip into two. That's the goal, at least. That's what they're trying to do today in the next couple of days, I think. Uh, then my expectation is that they'll, they'll figure out, they'll try to figure out where the tunnels are exactly, and they'll start blocking the tunnels. That is, they'll, they'll separate the south and the north tunnel-wise. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they will deal with the tunnels in the south, where I think Hezbollah has probably put most of its forces because there they are protected by civilians. There they can use uh, a human shield. Uh, but but what, what the IDF will probably do is block those tunnels and then start moving north and just just wipe them out as they go along, uh, you, you know, and, and, and destroy the tunnel system, destroy the ammunitions in it, and hopefully find some hostages and, uh, and, and do whatever they can to, uh, to, to destroy whatever infrastructure and whatever personnel Hamas has in the northern Gaza Strip, uh, whatever they have left. Remember, Israel's been bombing the northern Gaza Strip um, every day, hundreds of missiles. It is surprising there's anything standing there. Still, it just, sh it just suggests, to me at least, that they're being super precise and super careful not to hurt civilians. Um, and, uh, and, and inflicting as little damage on even the northern part of Gaza, which they've asked the Palestinians over and over and over and over and over to evacuate, uh, they're still being incredibly cautious in how they bomb it to their own detriment. It just means that the resistance for Hamas will be much stronger as the ground forces move in. Uh, so far, as far as I can tell, and we're in the fog of war, we don't really know what's going on the ground. We don't know how well they're advancing. We don't know what the casualty counts are. Uh, but but it, it, so far, it seems like the casualties are relatively uh, uh, small or relatively low. Um, I, I will say this. There was a, there was a report. Uh, this is kind of just an interesting point of fact that tells you a little bit about kind of the Israeli military. Uh, but there was a notification about a, a couple of soldiers that have been killed. Well, one soldier that was killed October 25th, that's the latest data that we have, that's five days ago. And then another soldier was killed October 10th, which is right after everything started. And, and what's interesting about this is the first is a Lieutenant Colonel Maidan Israel, 35, head of supply in the Southern Command. Uh, and the second is Major Yair Zluf, 32, commander of the 401st Armored Brigade Surgical Company. What is striking about this is, is how senior these people are. And, and this is fairly typical of the Israeli military. Senior commanders are at the front. Senior commanders are at the front line fighting with the soldiers. They're the first guys to rush. They're the first guys, you know, in this case, commander of, the, of, of a surgical company, uh, you know, he, he, he was there with his men on the front line. That is kind of in the DNA of the Israeli military, and I wouldn't be surprised, and you'll see this. You know, in the Entebbe raid, uh, which was the raid in 1977, I think, uh, where, where the Israeli special forces freed the hostages in Entebbe, 
of a hijacked airplane. The only casualty, there was one casualty, and the only casualty was the commander of, of special forces in Israel, the commander of Sayyid Matkal, which is, which is the unit that, that executed the raid. He was the only, he was shot by a sniper, he was the only casualty in the whole thing. By the way, uh, it was Bibi Netanyahu's brother, Yoni Netanyahu, a, a real hero, uh, actually, he was the one who gave, he was the one who read out, shrugged and gave Bibi Netanyahu out, shrugged. Uh, uh, and anyway, he was a, a real hero. But that, that's often the case in the Israeli military, is that the, the, that it is the commanders who, because they're on the front line, they lead their troops on the ground. Uh, I think a feature of free countries. You don't see this in authoritarian countries anywhere near as much.